In this tutorial we're going to show you how to create the toolpaths that would allow you to machine the quatrefoil design that you can see on the screen. The vectors for this example were created in an example which was covered in a tutorial in the vector drawing section of the tutorial disk. So we'll go ahead now and open the file that we created in that vector tutorial and start to create the toolpaths. Let's open our vector file by going, hit, clicking the link to open an existing file. We're going to choose um, from the project folder the file called quatrefoil-vectors.crv and these are the vectors that were created in the tutorial in the 2D drawing section. If you want to see how they were built you can refer back to that tutorial um, now or you can watch it after you've watched how we create the toolpaths. Within here I've got them organised onto various layers that are going to help me select them as we go through and create the toolpaths. I'm going to start by switching off all the layers and just switch on the layer called foils and click on that to make that the current layer. I'm going to hide that and hit F12 on the keyboard to come across to the toolpath list and we're going to go ahead and set up the material. I'm going to use a pretty standard setup, one inch material, Z0 off the top of the block, hit OK and the first path that I want to create here is a pocket to just pocket out between this circle and the inner vector for each quatrefoil and we'll, so we'll select the outer circle, the inner vector, outer circle and inner vector so with those six vectors selected I'm going to go to the pocket toolpath I'm going to go with a start depth of zero a cut depth of an eighth of an inch, 0.125 and we're going to select the quarter inch end mill, the 0.25 inch end mill and we're going to go ahead and we'll call that pocket circles and hit calculate. If I want now I can say preview toolpath we can see how that's going to look and maybe what I want to do is go ahead and say tile windows horizontal so we can see the 2D view and the 3D view together now that we've created and previewed a toolpath. Next I want to take each of those circles and profile around them so I'm going to um, inside of them. So I'm going to select each of the larger circles. So you just click off to deselect, select those three. We'll close the preview here. Come to the Create Profile toolpath, and I've already machined these down one eighth of an inch. So I'm going to put in a start depth of 0.125, and the cut depth I want to be an additional 0.125. So the total cut depth will be 0.25, but that's based on a start depth of 0.125, and then this additional cut depth of 0.125. Again we're going to use the 0.25 inch end mill and I'll call that toolpath profile circle, we'll hit calculate and we'll preview that toolpath to see how it's going to look. If I'm happy with that I'm going to go ahead and close the preview and now I'm going to do some v-carving so I'm going to bring up the layer manager, I'll just click in the 2D view here and the shortcut key to bring up the layer manager to so I don't have to go back to the design tab is control and L. So there's the layer manager, I'm going to switch off the foils layer, I'm going to switch on the v-carve layer and I'm going to click it to make sure it's the selected layer. I'm going to hide this now and we're going to go and v-carve these vectors. Now some of these vectors lie in the area that we've already machined down an eighth of an inch and some of them lie on the material's original surface. So I'm actually going to group these together just dragging a box while holding shift around these 12 vectors, control G to group those and then I'm just going to grab everything and shift and deselect my group and control G to group those and that just makes it easier for me to select between these. Now we're going to go ahead and machine the top set to start with, so I'll select those, we'll say create v-carve toolpath, I'm going to start depth is going to be zero, I'm going to um, come down 90 degree v-bit and we'll call that v-carve top surface, hit calculate, we can go ahead and preview that to see how those toolpaths are going to look and then I'm going to select these vectors, we'll close the preview come into the, a new v-carve toolpath and this time I'm going to call it v-carve um, inner circle and the start depth needs to be 0.125. If I couldn't remember the depth I could move the cursor over this area in the preview and you can see if we look in the bottom um, 
part of the interface so I'll just show you that where that is with the cursor so where the cursor is now if we look there when I'm hovering the cursor in the 3d view I can see the z depth for the area where I'm going to be v carving those parts into so I put the start depth 0.125 calculate and that means that when they're machined they're going to line up with that surface that we've got in there so we'll go ahead and close the preview again Now let's go ahead and bring up the layer manager, control L. We can switch off the V-carve layer now because we've uh, done creating those toolpaths. We'll go back to the foils layer, switch that on and select it to make it current. And what we're going to do in this case is run a ball nose tool around the inside of each of these uh, foil shapes. The quatrefoils, again, are going to be set in an eighth of an inch. We're cutting them in here. And the trifoils are going to be on the original surface of the material. So we'll go ahead and start with the trifoils. I'm going to select the outer shapes there and we'll come to the profile toolpath. We're going to start at zero, come down a quarter of an inch and I'm going to select a half inch ball nose. Hit apply, OK and we'll call that quatrefoils and hit calculate. Sorry, that was the trifoils. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the toggle toolpath menu display here and we'll change that to trifoils apply and hide so we've changed the name there of our toolpath because I misnamed that I can preview those now to see how that's going to look I do want to create the quatrefoil toolpath now so I'm going to select the outer vector for each of these and I'm going to go ahead and say that I want to do a profile toolpath I am, um, even though I'm coming down an eighth of an inch here, there's some material that I haven't machined away here. So I do want to still start at zero, but I need to come down 375 to account for the eighth of an inch plus the quarter inch depth that I want to go into this part. And we'll call this Quattro Foils. So we'll correctly name it this time. Again, I've got this machine vectors inside, which is what I want. We'll hit calculate. It may take a couple of passes to do that this time based on the tool settings. Again, we can preview that and see how that part's going to look. So we're doing quite well with our part now. In order to, uh, before we cut it out, I want to run the, the grooves at the top and the bottom. So again, come back to the 2D view. I'm going to actually close the preview here. Come back to the 2D view. Control L to bring up the layer manager. Uncheck the foils layer switch on the top and bottom grooves layer, make that current and uh, hide that. Now this, um, I want to cut a 3 8 inch groove in the top and bottom here with a 3 8 ball nose cutter. But I don't want to do that inside of the rectangle. I've represented these shapes with rectangles, but it would be much easier because of the cutter I'm using to just do a straight line cut down each of these. So what I'm actually going to do is hit F11 to come back to the drawing tab. I'm going to come to draw polyline and I'm going to snap to the midpoint of each end um, of the end of each of these. I'm going to hit the space bar to accept that and then carefully snap to the midpoint there. And there the vectors I'm actually going to select those inside vectors. Hit F12 to come back to the toolpath list. I'm going to say profile. I want to profile on those vectors. I'm going to go with a cut depth of um, 0.1875, so basically the radius of the cutter, the cutter I'm going to select is a 3 8 ball nose. So we'll go ahead and call that top and bottom grooves, Hit calculate, and if we look at that we can see how they're going to look. Now all that's left to do is to cut the part out. This is not just a case of cutting it out around the outer rectangle, but we also need to cut out the inner shapes of the quatrefoils and the trifoils. So I'm going to go ahead and close the preview again. Control L to bring up the layer manager. Switch off the top and bottom grooves layer. Switch on the outline layer. Switch on the foils layer. We'll go ahead and hide this again. And we're going to select this outside rectangle and then I'm going to select the inner shapes for each of the quatrefoils and each of the trifoils so that we can cut those out. I'm going to come to create profile toolpath. This time I want to cut all the way through so I'm going to go from 0 
but all the way through cut depth of one. I'm going to select our quarter inch, 0.25 inch end mill again, and this time I want to cut outside the vectors. So I want to go outside the edge, which means as it comes in uh, to these vectors that it uh, are contained within that outside shape, it will cut inside of them. Uh, the software knows to automatically alternate which side of a vector it's cutting on. So we can go ahead and call this toolpath cutout, hit calculate, we can see the toolpaths it's created there. If I want to be sure that it's cutting out the inside shapes first, which I obviously want it to do before it releases the part, we can always use the option to preview this running to the next retract. So we can click there, go ahead, and I'll just need to click through, and I can see that cutting around those inside shapes first, and then to the outside shape. So the reason we didn't see each of those cutting out is because I don't have the animate preview checked. If we wanted to take a look at that again, I could say reset preview. Maybe this time I'll set all the toolpaths except that last one. So we'll click all of those and we'll say preview visible toolpaths now. So it's going to preview each of those in turn. And now if I want to look at this last cutout, I'll switch on the animate preview and go to the run to retract. And this time we can see it showing as the area it's cutting out because I have the animate checked. So I can see that it's cutting out the inside shapes first before it goes ahead and cuts out the outside shape. So if we close this now, we can see we've created our toolpaths. We may want to drag our menu down because we've got quite a few toolpaths in here now. And what we would do to output these is to look for um, sets of tools that have got like toolpaths in them. So for instance, for the pocket circles and the profile circles, we're using the quarter inch gem mill, so they could be output in a single file. The V calves could be output in a single file because they're both 90 degree bits. The trifoil and the quatrefoil are both a half inch ball nose, so they could go in a single file. The top and bottom grooves are a 3 8 so they'd need to be a different file. And then the cutout, ultimately, the last thing would need to be a separate file because we'd want to make sure we did that last. So that concludes this tutorial where we show you how you can take fairly simple vector shapes but using a variety of tool um, shapes and depths you can create a very complex looking part that many people would look at and actually um, think would need to be done with a 3D model. But again just using the tool shapes, varying the depths and making sure we keep our part in order, we use the layers to help us keep it organised, then you can create a complex part like the panel that you can see here. And that concludes this tutorial.